Yes, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, to the Honorable Dr. Tusin Jargal Dur Dur Suren as the Head of Engineering and Technology Department from Mandak University. And then we have Apira Sultana as Associate Professor, Head of Pharmacy Department from the Hodi International University, Bangladesh. And then we have Mr. Marastika Wicaksono Ajiba Bono from Stecom University as lecturer of business department. And then we have Mr. Bibi Ardi Alpianto as lecturer from graphic design faculty. Yeah. Good morning. To start this event today, I hope we have a good mood and for this event run smoothly. And I will introduce myself also. My name Nopita will be moderator at this event. And I hope this event will be enjoyable and worthy of knowledge. Yeah. I would like to express our gratitude for your presence in this memorable occasion today. It's it in the uh, pressure to have you all here today. We will also like to thank God for his blessing so that this afternoon we could gather in here in this general webinar, webinar international with the uh, implementation of nanotechnology in in food industry. Before we start opening for another speed, I would love to tell you we are going to listen Indonesia national anthems, and then we have opening speeds from our college, Mr. Bibi Adi Alpianto. Then continue for presentation from speaker. At the end, we have Q and A session in the chat, or if you want to ask for audience, you can raise your hand. For the next session, we will listen Indonesian national anthems for opening. So, Mr. Aska, you can start it. Thank you. Mr. Aska, and the next session is the opening speech by Mr. Bibi Arti Alpianto. Yeah, for Mr. Bibi, you may start today's session with opening speech. Thank you. Test, test. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are now full of speakers today. Tuhin Jargai, Dochen, PhD, as uh, Head of Engineering and Technology Department on the PhD in Mongolia. Zakaria Sultana, PhD, as Associate Professor, Head of Pharmacy Department from the Hodi International University, Bangladesh. 
Maratika Saksono Atikuono as a lecturer of business department from Sekom University in Indonesia and all of his students guests. Um, ladies and gentlemen, may I first take this occasion to pay tribute to all of the teams of this international visitor intermediate title, implementation of nanotechnologies in food industry. Held by Stecom University in collaboration with DIC, Smart Innovation Future Talent Officers, Mindex University, Mongolia, and Dapokyo International University, Bangladesh. It is a great pleasure and, and an honor for me to hear this welcome remark at the opening of this international webinar. May I first take this opportunity to express my gratitude and appreciation as well as extend a cordial welcome to all of the audience, in particular for the speaker of today's event. The topic of our discussion this time is very technical, so it will be explained in more detail by our special speakers today. There is just original information that I can share with you all. We can get more detail about implementation of nanotechnology in the food industry from our great speakers today. So you have to pay more attention to the explanation from me. To conclude, I would like to extend my appreciation to the International Affairs Organization of SECOM for making this webinar international event. Finally, I wish you to enjoy this event today. Let's pray that our effort remains in the blessing of God. Ladies and gentlemen, the topic is of our discussion this time is very technical. So it will be spent more time by our special speaker today. It is just a little information I can share to you all. Thank you. Thank you for Mr. Bibi for opening speech. And then in the next session we have uh speaker from Mandak University, Dr. Tusin Jarga Dor yeah, for Dr. Tusin Jarga. Yeah, are you ready for presentation? Uh, hello everybody. Good morning. Can you see uh, my presentation? Yes, is it in physics? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm. Hello, everybody. Mm. Uh, I'm happy to greet you from Mandak University, Mongolia. Uh, my name is Dushin Jargal. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to present my lecture today. The topic is my presentation is some issues to improve teaching methods for engineering study. Uh, I will present my lecture according to this content. Uh, today, Generation Z is gaining properties. The name used to refer to was born beginning in the mid to late 1990s. Generation Z students are now motivated by one sided static learning content based on traditional methods because they are the most technologically saturated generation our world has ever seen. They are digitally transformed seamlessly integrating technology into, into their everyday realities. They are globally focused toward the emergence of a global pop culture, 
global brands and borderless virtual reality. Faculty must consider how to adjust to this new environment, including the changing needs and expectations of Generation Z students. Global education system is going by paradigm shift. Uh, pedagogy is the teaching of child and not defending personalities. Andragogy is the facilitation learning for adults who are self-directed learners. Pedagogy is the management of learning for self-managed learners. On the other hand, traditional education can be explained by the following measures. Uh, access, quality, cost are equal, first uh, and after. Uh, uh, access can increase or reduce because of quality and cost. Uh, now, here is the chance to gain quality education with access by low cost. Uh, how, this is often education. Uh, for example, MOOC and massive open online course. Uh, this is our chance. Engineering subjects uh, uh, and large content, the content of the course of large, have to teach this large content to the students with interesting and efficient way. Basic engineering uh, courses uh, contain calculation, formulation, graphic charts, actual results, and check the results. For us, basic engineering courses include kinematics, dynamics, me mechanical engineering, and machine design. Among them, kinematics and dynamics is one of the most important engineering courses for students to analyze the structure of machinery, uh, to understand motion and perform kinematics and dynamic analysis, as well as to design and invent new machines. Uh, we should start our lesson with the question, what level our students would achieve, rather than the question, what I will teach. Uh, classroom lesson like conducted in direct communication between teacher and students, while online learning is conducted in indirect communication between teachers and students. Therefore, there is need to develop a special planning model for teaching activities. Now we are implementing the following golden objective uh, to make lesson planning design of kinematic analysis uh, to determine the large coefficient of kinematic analysis. We teach usage of easy enough application in kinematic analysis using a smart board that installed to applications to grid operating kinematic analysis of mechanisms using gene software. A basic engineering lesson requires a lot of time because they contain a lot of calculations, graphics, and information. Also, the teacher is required to use rulers and drawing comps to grid graphic diagrams on the board. Although traditional instructional methods, methods can be used effectively, but the results of the calculations are unclear and content is time consuming. Uh, first, we select the topic of kinematic analysis of mechanisms, then analyze logical structure identification elements and determine the load coefficient of information. Uh, I have determined the following things about the subjects. Uh, for example, first, to calculate the number of learning elements, the topics. Uh, difference in the level of learning ability uh, in the, and the information capacity, instruction period. Uh, this time is only for delivering knowledge uh, students for the total duration of in, internship, the plenty time for knowledge 
delivery section is 45 minutes. A lot coefficient of information, uh, 1.28. This show, shows that there is a heavy workload in providing this information and knowledge to the students. And one way to reduce this workload is to use smart parts to convey knowledge in efficient, realistic, and accessible way. Uh, second, two grid instructional design model. Um, instructional design is a systematic way, way to effectively plan learning activities. You can see them at this link. Uh, for example, in instructional design model of Dick and Kerry, Robert Garner's model of instructional design, uh, empathic instructional design model. Uh, the most common and the most widely used model in instruction is uh, the AD model. The AD model explains, explains the learning design process step by step. And analysis, design, development, information, and evaluation. Uh, as for the learning design model on the kinematic analysis of mechanisms, first we developed a learning design model, kinematic analysis lesson of kinematic and dynamic of mechanism course of following steps. Uh, for first, Analyze international uh, and get the now students, uh, get the now the course. Uh, um, types of course, duration of the lesson, course needs, requirements. Second, we have the whole course design and A, result of the course, B, aim of the course, C, scope of content, the learning materials, it demonstration material, F teaching methods. Toward this development section, uh, we use uh, GIM program. Uh, the result of the kinematic analysis of the mechanism are compared with the design and operation of the mechanism using the GIM program, followed by the kinematic analysis. For information section, uh, uh, this uh, shown in this picture, I uh, implement uh, and uh, section A, uh, A recovery section, B the basic theoretical concept section, uh, C reinforcement section, and D homework. Fifth, evolution section, uh, instructional evolution AD. Evolution of learning environment and satisfaction. Evaluate the teacher from the student's point of view. Uh, we use Kirkpatrick's evolution. Uh, to lesson evaluation by the teacher. Now, after each lesson, the following questionnaire will be used, evaluate. To evaluate. evaluate. Evaluate the student from the teacher's point of view. Students' knowledge, skills, and attitudes will be evaluated in the form of tests and interviews throughout the lesson. Evaluation of student learning, progress evaluation, final evaluation, with term exam twice during the course, quarterly exam. Second, we preparation of online learning course of part of providing knowledge of kinematic analysis of kinetic analysis of mechanisms. Uh, in order to teach the kinematic analysis of mechanism and the force analysis of mechanism that are topics of listening kinematics and dynamics of mechanism by graphic formulaic methods is necessary to grid vector polygons called velocity, acceleration and force plan. To do this draw a line that intersect parallel and perpendicular lines and then measure the result of the calculation from a vector, vector polygon color plan. This lesson is specific because of this data content intensive and time consuming topics. The topics are taught using this easy enough gym and the gym programs, which allow for accurate calculation and provide realistic knowledge for students. Uh, 
Isinat application usage this feature. Isinat supports multiple mod mods, lecture preparation, teaching, desktop, cla classic and simplified. The basic function in all mods are the same. That is shown is uh, ruler uh, and compass. I, I would like to show you one example, my preferred lesson. The time to teach the practical this new easy application is 32 minutes, a lot of of information of oh. 0 0.73. In the gym, 22 program doing kinematic analysis to the main crankshaft mechanism. And it may be possible to see actual results. Uh, now clearly how effective is study this topic uh, to understand the relevance of previous listening topics. Three, by studying the listening, students will gain knowledge and skills on how to use it in practice in the future. The gym program which analyze, analyzes the mechanisms and the internet application, which is used is smart boards or boards and computers are used to teach basic information intensive engineering courses by using these programs in the classroom the movement of mechanisms can be shown realistic calculating results are easy to understand providing systematic information and accuracy of the calculations graphics pictures are high and it is possible to to know the results directly for the topic of Kinematic analysis of the mechanisms, the calculation of the information that was sent to us, 1.28, while losing easy enough application was uh, 0.73, which is the advantage of effective delivery of information with high content in short time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for Dr. Tufsin Jardal. It's a uh, wonderful material.
And then in the second speaker, we have Dr. Safira Sultana from Dafodil International University, Bangladesh. Yeah, for Dr. Safira, the time is yours. Thank you. Hello, am I audible? Yes, madam. Thank you. My screen is visible. Can you please? Is it visible now? Yes, it is visible now. Okay. Okay, this is Dr. Sharifa Sultana, Associate Professor and Associate Head, Department of Pharmacy, Daffodil International University. Uh, I'm grateful to all of you, the organizing body, who invite me as a speaker in the International webinar Implementation of Nanotechnology in Food Industry. So thank you all. Uh, I start my presentation Actually, my topic is prospects of non nanotechnology in food processing and safety. You know, uh, nanotechnology actually is the most demanding area now. And it uh, uh, day by day, it uh, acceptability is increased in different area. And food industry is most promising area for um, nanotechnology. Now I'm focusing the um, what actually nanotechnology. Over the past few decades, nanotechnology has revolutionized the food sector. It is, sorry, uh, it contains the nanometer scale, one to 100 nanometer to create and use material that have novel properties. You see here, uh, one to 100 nanometer in this range, protein, DNA, virus, these are the similar in nano size. And you also see the other area which is not explored in the nano area. Our focused area is uh, one to 100 nanometer. So uh, these materials have unique properties due to the high surface to volume ratio and other novel physicochemical properties like its color, solubility, strength, diffusivity, toxicity, magnetic, optical, and thermodynamic properties. Nanotechnology has brought new industrial revolution in both developed and developing countries. Therefore, nanotechnology offers a wide range of opportunity for the development and application in various areas like agriculture, food, and medicine. Our today's focused area is food. You see the picture, here I summarize the um, nanotechnology which is applied in food science technology. You see the product, food safety bio and biosecurity processing and materials. The commonly used materials for as a nanoparticles are uh, nanotechnology are nanoparticles, nanocomposite, nanostructured material and nano emulsion. And we using these nanomaterials in the product for delivery of food products, food packaging, and formulation development. In case of processing, we use heat mass transfer, nanoengineering, nanotechnology, and molecular synthesis. And we use nanosensor and nanotracers for food safety and biosecurity. So nanotechnology it, in food industry, we are using lots of uh, substances like uh, titanium dioxide, nanoparticles, almost 40% products uh, used in nanometer range in cosmetic industries, food beverages, and color cosmetics and pigments. This is the application of nanotechnology in food industry. We can divide in two groups. One is food processing, another one is food packaging. In case of food processing, we are using 
nanoparticles in as an anti caking agents nano additives and nutraceuticals gelating agents nano capsulation and nano carriers as anti caking agent nanoparticles improve the consistency and prevent the lump formation as gelling as gelating agent it improve the food texture and consistency in nano additives and nano nutraceuticals improve the nutritional value of the food and nano capsulation and nano carriers helps to protect the flavor or fragrance of the ingredients in food in case of food packaging we are using improved pack active pack and smart pack in improved pack nano particles improve the physical performance of the food and active packaging it helps to prevent from the microorganism and smart packing nano biosensors are used for detection of the pathogen from food products in this figure i would like to mention how nano materials are used in our uh, food products and uh, what type of regulatory we have to consider before using this nano technology you are using we are using nano materials for food processing toxicity analysis food product formulation food safety and biosecurity but all this product should be a uh, process should be validated we have to evaluate its um, safety and efficacy uh, by uh, different r and d process test it and calibrate it then functionally evaluate and finally validate the process because this validation is the requirement of regulatory authorities uh we know there is some nano particles who may cause some adverse effect to human body uh, like it may cause uh, cause cancer in lungs uh, titanium dioxide which is widely used that after inhalation of titanium dioxide may leads to lung cancer so which is carcinogenic so we have to uh, optimize the amount and uh, we have to validate the process in food processing uh, we are using nano structured food ingredients which are uh, developed with the claims that they offered improved taste texture and consistency of the food <laughs> it increases the shelf life of different kind of food materials nowadays nano carriers are being utilized as delivery system to carry food additives in food products without disturbing their basic morphology it is also applied in the formation of encapsulation emulsion biopolymer matrix simple solution and association colloids offer efficient delivery system nanopolymers are trying to replace conventional materials and food packaging it have better properties for encapsulation and release efficiency and traditional encapsulation system it masks the bad odor or taste control interaction of active ingredient with the food matrix and control the release of active agents as a result that ensure the ability of the drug at target time and specific rate and protect them from moisture heat chemical or biological degradation during processing and storage finally it exhibit the compatibility with other compounds in the system moreover this delivery system possesses the ability to penetrate deeply into issues due to their smaller size and thus allow efficient delivery of active compounds to target sites in the body various synthetic and natural polymer based encapsulating delivery system have been elaborated for improve bioavailability of the active food components there are some examples where we use these nano techniques uh first one the edible coatings to preserve the quality of fresh food we are use edible coating by using gelatin based edible coatings uh chitosan chitosan film with nano silicon dioxide we are using hydrogels which can be easily placed into the capsule that protect the drug from extreme environment like protein hydrogel we are using polymeric micelle that uh, solubilize water in insoluble compounds uh, nano emulsion that is used for greater stability to droplet aggregation for example beta carotene based nano emulsion we are also uh, enhance the optical clarity and 
oral bioavailability in case of beta carotene based nano emulsion. We are also uh, use the nano techniques of liposomes, which uh, liposomes surround in an aqueous solution inside the hydrophobic membrane. It can be used delivery vehicles for hydrophobic molecules or hydrophilic molecules. For example, cationic lipid incorporated liposomes modified with an acid level polymer hydrobranched HPG. Inorganic nanoparticles uh, which are widely used like uh, titanium dioxide, silicon dioxide uh, that are used for um, like mesoporous silica nanoparticles. For ensuring the texture, taste and appearance of the food, we are also applied this nanotechnology that provide a range of options to improve the food quality and also help in enhancing the food taste. Uh, these techniques have been used broadly to improve the flavor release and retention and delivery of the culinary balance. The use of nano emulsion to deliver lipid soluble bioactive compound is much popular since they can be produced natural food ingredients. You see this picture by which we maintain the taste of different um, fruits, foods, and uh, we can modify the texture according to our desire uh, by applying this nanotechnology. We also provide promising means of improving the bioavailability of nutraceutical compounds due to their subcellular size, leading to a higher drug viability. Many metallic oxides such as titanium dioxide, silicon dioxide have conventionally used to maintain the color and flow agent of the food items. Silicon dioxide nanomaterials are also one of the most used food nanomaterials as a carrier to maintaining the fragrance or flavor of the food products. We also enhance the nutritional value by using this technique. A majority of bioactive compounds are sensitive to highly acidic environment and enzyme activity of the stomach and duodenum. Encapsulation technique or by using the nanotechnology, we can stop this degradation in stomach, which is quite hard to achieve in nanocapsulated form due to low water solubility of this bioactive compound. Nanoparticle-based tiny edible capsule with the aim to improve the delivery of medicines, vitamins, or micronutrients that ensure or enhance the nutritional value. The microencapsulation or nanocampo uh, nano composite, nano emulsification, nano structurization are the different techniques which have been applied to encapsulate the substance in miniature forms to more effectively deliver nutrients like protein, antioxidant for precisely targeted nutritional and health benefits. Polymeric nanoparticles suitably for the encapsulation of bioactive compound. In this figure, you show that nanotechnology for nutraceutical delivery are used to improvement of the active bioavailability, protecting the product from the environment, influence on flavors and aroma, prolonged shelf life, enhance solubility, reduction of side effect, control release, targeted delivery, use of grass ingredient, that means the uh, ingredients uh, which recognize as safe and poor delivery of active compounds. We also preserve our product or enhance the shelf life by using this technology. Nano capsulation extend the shelf life of a food products by slowing down the degradation process or prevent the degradation until the product is delivered at the target site. Moreover, the edible nano coatings on various food materials could provide a barrier to moisture and gas exchange and deliver colors, flavors, antioxidants, enzyme, and anti-browning agent, and could also increase the shelf life of manufactured food products. Encapsulating functional components within the droplet often enables a slowdown of chemical degradation, 
that improve the shelf life of the product. Here we are using a nano layer which enhancing the product shelf life by preventing the degradation or uh, the biological um, microorganism can grow in this biological degradation also can be prevented by using this layer. Now the nanotechnology in food packaging. Food packaging uh, widely used in food packaging nanotechnology because it enhances the shelf life and it maintains the normal or basic morphology of the uh, food product. As a result, we get the normal or the um, acceptable taste of the product. Nano-based smart and active food packaging confer several advantages over conventional packaging methods from over providing better packaging material with improved mechanical strength, barrier properties, antimicrobial films, to non-sensing for pathogen detection and altering consumer to safety status of the food. Application of nanocomposite as an active material for packaging and material coating can also be used to improve the food quality. Using inorganic nanoparticles, a strong antibacterial activity achieved in low concentration and more stability in extreme condition. Therefore, in recent years, it has been a great interest of using these nanoparticles in nanomicrobial food packaging. Many nanoparticles such as silver, copper, chitosan, metal oxide, nanoparticles like titanium dioxide, zinc oxide have been reported to have antibacterial property. Nanocomposite and nanomaterials have been actively used in food packaging to provide a barrier from extreme thermal and mechanical shock extending food shelf life. In this way, the incorporation of nanoparticles into packaging materials offer quality food with longer shelf life. The incorporation of nanoparticles in polymers has allowed developing more resist packaging material with cost effectiveness. Use of inert nanoscale fillers such as clay, silicate nanopillars, silica nanoparticles, chitin or chitosan into the polymer matrix rendered the lighter, stronger, fire resistant and better thermal properties. Antimicrobial nanocomposite film, which are prepared by impinging the fillers having at least one dimension in nanometric range or nanoparticles into the polymers offer two way benefits. Different types of nano packaging you find here the improved packaging, active packaging, and intelligent packaging. Improved packaging offer gas barrier, temperature resistant, humidity resistance, and active packaging offer you the inactivation of pathogen, expanding the shelf life, increasing food safety, and the intelligent packaging that is offered by nanotechnology or nanomaterials recognize the spoilers and recognize pathogens and monitor the food quality. These are the common uh, nanoparticles which is used for food packaging, silver, zinc oxide, titanium oxide, and silver oxide. Silver used in the matrix of asparagus, orange juice, poultry meat, fresh cut melon, beef meat, and exudates. And zinc oxide used in orange juice, liquid egg, albumin, titanium dioxide used in Chinese jujuba, strawberry, silver oxide used in apple juice that treated the microbial spoilers. Titanium dioxide reduced the browning, slow down the ripening and decay of the uh, ingredient. Zinc oxide effectively reduces the lactobacillus, salmonella, yeast, and mold count without change the quality parameters. Silver retards the growth of aerobic, cytotrophics, yeast, and molds, antimicrobial effect against E. coli and Staphylococcus aureus. So, nanotechnology also used for the food security or food safety by detecting the pathogen. How can it detect? application of biosensor, we can detect uh, the pathogen by uh, it also used to monitor the soil quality, food quality, pathogen detection, drug discovery, toxin detection, water monitoring, disease detection, and environmental monitoring. 
In food microbiology, nanosensor or nanobiosensor are used for the detection of pathogen in processing plants or in food material that quantify the available food constituents, altering the consumers and distributors on the safety status of the food. The nanosensor works as an indicator that respond to change in the environmental condition like humidity, temperature, storage room, microbial contamination, or the product degradation. Thin film-based optical immunosensor for detection of microbial substance or cell have lead to rapid and highly sensitive detection system. In this immunosensor, a specific antibody is generates against the antigen or protein molecules are immobilized on thin nanofilms or sensor chips which emit signals on detection the, uh, of the target molecule. Nanotechnology can also assist in the detection of pesticide, pathogen, and toxins serving in the food quality tracking, tracing, monitoring chain. Biosensor based on carbon nanotubes have been also successfully applied for the detection of microorganism, toxin, and other degraded products in food and beverages. Further, the use of electronic tongue or nose, which is consists the array of nanosensor monitor the food condition by giving signals on aroma or gases released by food items. The quartz crystal microbalance, QCM, based electric nose can detect the interaction between various odorants and the chemicals that have been coated on the crystal surface of the QCM. So we also take the safety concern or the nanomaterials that we applied here, is it safe for the human body? Beside a lot of advantage of nanotechnology to food industry, safety issue associated with the nanomaterial cannot be neglected. I already mentioned some point about uh, silicon dioxide, titanium dioxide, who is leading to uh, health risks that may lead to cancer or other uh, problem. The small size of this nanomaterial may increase the risk of bioaccumulation within the body organs and tissue. For example, silica nanoparticles, which are used as anti-caking agent, can be cytotoxic in human lungs that's subjected to exposure. Regularly authority, regulatory authorities must develop some standard for commercial product to ensure the product quality, health, safety. Otherwise, it may lead to a risk factor for human body. So thank you all for your patient hearing. If you have any question, you can ask me. That's all about from me. Thank you, Dr. Safira. Is it a wonderful material and amazing presentation? Yeah, for QA, we will do it after all of speaker is enough for presentation. And the last speaker we have Mr. Marastika Bichaksono Aji Bawono. Yeah, for Mr. Marastika, you can start for this session. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for attention. Uh, for Novita, uh, will be share the presentation. Okay, this is uh, the for the nanotechnology from lab to industry. Uh, next. Okay, my background uh, keynote speaker. Uh, my name is Master Kuchisona Jibawono. My education, the management informatics in, in the Open Veteran Jakarta. My bachelor degree is system information in Open Veteran Jakarta. The magister management for the Open Veteran Jakarta and magister uh, technical information for the Swiss German University. Now, uh, as a job, the Peter Jacob in Indonesia and part time in the Lecturer and uh, University Techcom. Okay, next. The point that the will be explained the, for the nanotechnology, understanding the nanotechnology growth, development, 
uh, and then understanding the what is the analogy, understanding the comparison, the micro caspic, then the micro caspic object, and understanding the nano word, uh, understanding the fun sentence, nano particle, understanding the making general uh, material depositing in the nanoparticle and atoms, the understanding for the nanoparticle uh, interacting with living system. Next. Okay, the understanding the hierarchy of the natural nano architecture. Next. The understanding electrical control nano architecture. The understanding, understanding the nano science or a nanotechnology. Next. Nah, this is the video. You can play um Navita. Yes, yes. Okay, 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 no problem. This is the next aja. Okay, next. Okay, uh, from this uh, part, the attack for the nanotechnology in the world. Okay. Yes. After video, okay. Then. Okay, this is the graphic for the nanotechnology in the world. Uh, and nanotechnology, yes, yes. First, the 1927, the alter the biotechnology is a form of being observed and supported them. It's full the commercial uh, potential for the respected to come and a flotation uh, is uh, another major difference uh, between the biotechnology and nanotechnology is that the biotechnology focuses on a single base, main base material and the uh, nanotechnology for the base material is the mineral, plant, animal, food, human and combination. And nanotechnology has found the immediate spots on the agendas of a policy machine and a uh, and the industry leaders. Okay, this is the uh, nanotechnology in the Japan for the growth in in the traffic is the above normal. Next. Okay, uh, the nanotechnology is the control of the matter and anatomic level. The ability to build the using atoms, to build the blocks and the manufacture of nanomaterial with novel the properties. It's nanometer, is nano. This is the calculation for the nanotechnology. This one is the nano structure. Nano structure is structure is the less the one dimension, the under less the 100 nanometer. Next. Okay, this is the nanotechnology. This is the particular the particular nanotechnology in the labs for the labs. This is the example for the nanotechnology and the uh, microscopic <coughs> focus. Next. Now, this is this uh, comparison for the microscopic object 
benda atau analogis you can be a calculation in this kind of object uh, out of the, the principle nanotechnology uh, selected the nanostructure can be produced dependent on micro technology a functional and the profession of the nanosystem requires the interaction with the uh, microsystem and media for the microscopic work. Therefore, a close uh, connection between the analog and micro technology is required. Identitionality, uh, the authority of model method, uh, the originality develop the micro technology, develop the uh, application and technology. Okay, next. This is the nanotechnology in, this, in the world. Nah, nanotechnology is the virus. For example, the virus, the pandemic COVID. This 5D atoms in nanotechnology, the microscope, the form the microscope. This is the nano cluster. In the nano cluster, with the nano cluster, you think the single atom in cluster and make the virus. The piece of the cup or the, of the iron take it into the alert conch. The resulting of a block, uh, the virus, all the small note and the habit uh, and the nano words where the bacteria are much uh, legal, legal. Okay, next. This is the evaluation of the nanotechnology. The functional nanoparticle and Cell, the magnetic nanoparticle assisting the ferromagnetic to the surround uh, the antiferromagnetic uh, and uh, the lower the picture on array the scoring and the work nanotechnology. And then the occur the cell magnetic nanoparticle with a second of cells of growth that can make it easy to touch the biological technology. The molecules such as the proteins or the attributes or drug. The magnetic uh, core of the particle uh, stir the atoms molecular to a specific area of the body. This, this is a nanotechnology with this example the virus. Okay, next. Nah, this is the making granular material for the lab industry for the debusting nanoparticle. And the atom, and the particle source and the atomic vapor source, the making granular, so the defusing the nanoparticle and atoms. Granular is the products, the depositing, uh, perform a nanoparticle, and with atomic, the vapor, conventional uh, evaporate the nanoparticle uh, ember. Next. This is the because you can zoom the viruses in the your body, the nanoparticle and nanotechnology, the microscopic cell for many virus in this uh, bacteria. In this, this uh, high resolution the image of some particle attached for the reproduce the primers permission institute the silver. Uh, Nanoparticles, the virus is high virus. The general that uh, make the different and the uh, and then uh, virus and attachment of the nanoparticle. Okay, next. This is the hierarchy of natural molecular nano articles. You can see the diagram, the molecular nanomodules, the molecular chains, the structure, the, next the secondary structure and the macro, molecular, uh, the supramolecular, the complex. This is the principle of construction uh, hierarchy, supramolecular structure. Okay, next. This glass, the fiber with conical flip. Wait, wait, uh, uh, before. Nano science, okay. The electrical control, the nano actual. This is the electrical control for the nano particle. This is the even the micro technology and the nano technology because the short distance in this uh, electrical uh, the control mechanical 
decisions, the structure with the height, the resonance, the coins, the nanostructure with standing, the structure uh, equal collation. Okay, next. Okay. What is the different the nanoscience or technology? Nanoscience is the, the fundamental principle for nanostructure between the bulk and autonom autonomic properties. And then, the between the nanotechnology, the application of nanostructure into useful the device. Okay, next. This is the now the very beginning the nanotechnology stained glass the nanoparticle part the, and the damascus steel era. This is the era. This in the principle of this of a physics as a part as a, I can see to speak against the possibility of the maneuvering. This is the atom by atom. It's the atom atom the nanoparticle. Okay, next. Of course, the 1927, the nanotechnology coined the Taniguchi. The first atom is the beginning of the Rohel stem. The engine creation, creation the coming as the nanotechnology by a Richard Nanotechnology Nanotology is the principle of the atom manipulation, atom by atom, to support the control of the structure of the matter at the molecular level is entails and the ability to build the molecular system with the atom by atom by precisions yielding a variety of nanomachine. Okay, next. This is the example for the lab but industry in the nanotechnology with the microscopic. We can the making the product, the nanotechnology, nanofood technology or nano for the, uh, make the solution for the viruses. Okay, next. Oh, particle are small, high is surface to volume ratio. Rick, rick the differently, act the different new properties interact with like the differently momentum, the mechanism with the classical mechanics and the interesting material, the interesting material of nanoparticle embed. Okay, next. This is the surface, the energy is increased to surface the area is nanoparticles. Different to grow to grow the surface energy, the nanoparticles in the calculation. Okay, next. Physical structure or the, what is the structure difference of nanoscale? High represented surface the atoms, special confinement, reduce the Impression what the properties and affected when the what the, the properties what tune we tune okay thank you next that this is the diagram for the lower the particle diameter diameter the soup find the particle technology springer the field the London more the near at least than the twenty hundred nanometers. Now the melting, the point of the nanostructure. So first, an agree increase as the size this decreases. Okay, next. This is the bend and gap analysis for the interest of particular size, the decreases metal, insulator, semiconductor, and semiconductor. Next. Particle interact the different with light. The standard are small with the wave the of the visible light. Photo, photo, photonic this crystal, the surface, the plus moon, and the oceans, and the quantum dot, the, the cushions. Okay, next. This is the surface, surface the plus moon resonance. This is the interactive of the light with the metallic nanoparticle surface and then the coupling the electrons.
across an incident like, and then the local is the coherent and oscillation of the electron to enable the optical properties of the nonstructure depend on the size set of composition in human. This is the bottles. Bottles make the nanoparticle. Next. Okay. This is the bend the gap as the nano uh, particle is the nucleus for the bottles. Make the bottles changing the quantum dot, the, the big dot, and the, the small dot. Make the nano particle change the nano with the nano technology and the latest dot in the matter. Next. This is the size the geographical technology. Is the virus for the, the calculation and now two no matter so the, the and this the blood uh, particle and then the viruses the influenza. Okay, next the calculation for the matter. This is uh, carbon nanotubes, nanotubes for the lab, the three bulky balls, the steroids, and next. This is my book, the Nano Essential the Production, Nano Sense Nanology, Nano Stelogy, and the Nano Structural Material. And then we can, uh, I can share the book in this, the, the book digital for you. Okay, next. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for attention. This is uh, my handphone number and my Gmail. Yeah, thank you for Mr. Marastika for your PPT. And then we have a QA session. Yeah, and first question we have uh, Rajas Ferry. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Am I audible? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rajas Ferry. I'm a uh, Sports Master Student of Stecom University, major in Information System. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask uh, my questions addressed to Dr. Sarifa. Dr. Sarifa? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, I would like to ask some questions regarding from your presentation. The first one about the titanium dioxide. You said that it is a uh, quite carcinogenic, but why it's still used by most of company in their product? Why don't they replace it with another material, maybe such as graphene? If you ever heard about graphene, it is more efficient rather than any material that exists. Okay, Rajeshri, yeah. thank you for your nice question. Yeah. Actually, titanium dioxide is mostly used in cosmetic product and yeah. uh, of course used in food packaging also mm -hmm. and uh, food processing too because of its, uh, due to its uh, acceptance as a um, covering agent, mm -hmm. you know, uh, most of the sunscreen agents contain uh, titanium dioxide. Yeah. If you want to use in food grade, you have to ensure the um, limit. Okay. Should be the acceptable range, the ADI, daily mm -hmm. acceptable uh, intake. If you maintain the daily acceptable range, there is no problem. If you increase the ADI level, that mm -hmm. leads to carcinogen. So we have to ensure uh, by the regulatory bodies our uh, packaging or if you use uh, uh, titanium dioxide in food technology, food processing, you have to maintain the ADI. Don't uh, use more than the ADI limit. If you cross the ADI limit, there is a chance of cancer. So uh, if you maintain the ADI limit, no problem. 
otherwise uh, it may cause cancer. So we use this ingredient because it has the diversity. It uh, You will get lots of advantage from this ingredient. Mm -hmm. So titanium dioxide can be used by maintaining the ADI limit. Okay, uh, but we never know that the exact amount which uh, the company put on the product. So how to make sure that we already know that we use it in the limit, not cross that limit? Because most of com most of company won't uh, say that clearly in the ingredients. Okay, uh, I mentioned in my presentation. Mm -hmm you have to maintain uh, the validation mm. that is mentioned by uh, regulatory bodies. Mm. So if you launch any product of you, if you use any ingredient in your product, you have to uh, validate it. Is it acceptable? Mm. If you uh, follow all the criteria of validation, right, like uh, its uh, range, its accuracy, its precision, mm. If you maintain all the parameter of validation, you will meet the regulatory bodies. So uh, without maintaining the validation, no ingredient should be used in your product. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, and another questions, may I? <laughs> may I? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, about biological degradation. So it means that it just, uh, it just increase the food self life. Why don't uh, it can be, how to say it, uh, as I ever watch a movie. So there's a lot of implementation of nanotechnology and it's beneficially for, uh, how to say it, it is ability for regeneration. So it means that it can fix uh, some broken parts. So it means uh, that product or that uh, maybe suit or whatever that contains nanotechnology cannot be broken or cannot, yeah, cannot be broken. So why uh, it just uh, decrease that food self life, not uh, can make that food or product maybe fresh for permanent, ma'am? Can you repeat the question in a brief? Actually, I okay. don't... Uh, you said that about biology. I think biological, you, want, uh, dec you want to know the uh, de decomposition process of nano uh, technology used packaging material, is it? Yeah. We should, uh, in this case, you have to follow the, of course, the guideline. How can you decompose it? Mm -hmm. uh, most of these are biodegradable. Mm -hmm. So there is no problem if your component is biodegradable. Mm -hmm. Uh, that may, uh, I think, not too uh, hazardous for the environment. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, uh, one more last question. Okay, about nanotechnology and pathogen detection. Is it only applicable for a raw material or, or after that product already in the market? So it can scan that, oh, it's uh, this product already contaminated or something like that. It is not only applicable for raw materials, it is also mm -hmm. applicable for finished goods. And mm -hmm. you will find that we are using in packaging material to, to uh, make the product stable. So not only for raw materials. Okay, so then why we still uh, found that in the market, we buy some food or some product after we open it, so that product already broken and something like you know, cannot be, cannot be edible too. If that nanotechnology already implement, then why we still uh, found some food already broken? We have found some food already broken. broken. Yeah. And cannot but, be edible. Of course, uh, if you pack anything mm -hmm. properly, you mm -hmm. have to maintain, uh, your packaging is done by nano process ingredient. Mm -hmm. NP. So if it is broken, of course, the uh, moisture, humidity, or environmental factor can degrade your product. So broken product uh, may not ensure the stability. It also, of course, de degraded by the environmental factor. 
Oke, okay, ma'am. As per you, your knowledge, uh, how it, about the implementation of the nanotechnology? It's already uh, reached for all company that already implemented, or just a few companies already implement. Actually, uh, every process has advantages and disadvantages. You have to find out the risk benefit ratio. Mm -hmm. If it is uh, beneficial for the organization for the product for the consumer, you have to choose it. If it is not effective, you have to ban it. But nanotechnology is growing day by day because of its acceptance. So I think uh, it's a huge opportunity for the um, food industry, uh, drug uh, industry or pharmaceuticals to cope up the advantage of nanotechnology as well as at the same time, you have to find out the risk factor too and address the requirement of the regulatory bodies like FDA, UKMHR, TGA, who you have to satisfy them. If you maintain their requirement, you can use this technique. Okay, okay. Thank you for answering, ma'am. Thank you for the Thank you so much for your nice question, sir. <laughs> okay, thank you for asking a lot. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, I think no more question again. Okay, I continue the session for closing. Oh, we have a first question. Second question from Miss Abigail Aceta. Okay, uh, can you hear my voice clearly? Hello? Yes. Okay. Um, I have a question for Mr. Aji. And the question is, um, Okay, uh, first, my name is Azeda. I am student of graphic science at the program at Stanford University. Continue to Rajesh for his question. Nanotechnology seem to have been widely implemented in various fields and industry, including health, and nanotechnology has a positive impact that is so good for this thing. But nanotechnology is also has a negative impact on nanotechnology, such as uh, nanojust, which will probably increase and will actually harm human health. So how do you think you can overcome this? Or um, what is your comment about this, sir? Okay, thank you so much for the questions. Uh, this nanotechnology, the impact factor for the humans for the negative and positive. Yes. Wait. Okay. Okay, the nanotechnology instrumental impact can be split to, uh, into two aspects. The potential for nanotechnology innovation to have the improve of the improvement and the possibly, possibly the novel type, the pollution and the nanotechnology material which shows the repeat risk the improvement. Okay. Next, the potential risk in the include the environmental nanotechnology health and safety issues, the transitional the effects such as the displacement of the traditional industry as the product of the nanotechnology become dominant, which are the concern to privacy rights of the advocates. This uh, may be particularly important potential negative effect the nanoparticle are overlooked. Uh, the social impact for the nanotechnology, the beyond to the toxicity, the risk to human health, and uh, the human risk are the associated with the first generation nanomaterial. And nanotechnology has broader social impact and the poses border social challenge. 
social scientists and the social scientists have the suggested that the non-autonomic social issues for be the, to be uh, understood and uh, assess uh, not a simple uh, a downstream risk or impact. Rather, the challenges sought to be uh, factorial into the upstream research and decision making in order and to insert the technology development that meets social object. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for uh, the questions. Um, and then uh, I want to continue to to miss. Aska boleh minta tolong kak Azizanya di unmut. Okay, lagi di klik. Nah. Yeah. Uh, I want to continue to miss. I'm so sorry if I wrong when pronounced. Mr. Chin Jargal from Mongolia. Um, what do you think? Uh, no. What your comment about this? What you comment about the risk impact like has a negative impact from nanotechnology, Miss? Uh, I'm sorry, please uh, again. I yes. can Okay, you, you cannot hear my voice. Um so now can you hear my voice? Uh, if, if you uh, uh, then write the chat. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, I will write it in on chat. I Wait. can, you're speaking. Uh, I yes. Yeah, maybe for Dr. Tusin Jarka is uh, already, Abigail Azeda is already chat in a room chat. Maybe you can see it because I can see a room chat in my phone. So, okay. Yeah, for Dr. Tusin Jarka. Uh, please uh, ask me uh, in possible uh, type a message in chat. Do you understand me? Yeah. 
Uh, I think Miss IZ are still typing, maybe. Oh, yes, uh, I asked this for, for Miss, oh, I'm so sorry, it's really difficult for me to pronounce your name. Miss Tursin Jargal. Okay, it is, uh, I just want to know about your comment um, about negative impact nanotechnology and it has in pollution risk as Mr. Aji said. And because pollution just by nanotechnology, even how the nanotechnology is have um, is have many positive impact, but I think here is also any negative impact. And I think it's also the important thing to solve. And what about your comment, Mom? Kak Z mungkin chatnya bisa dikirim ke WA Pak. Oke, okay, thank you. Then I will continue after the session. Thank you. Can we move to the next question? I think uh, there is. This is already. Uh, this is question for Miss Tufsin Jarga. Yeah. What's your comment about negative impact nanotechnology? Is it has and pollu pollution risks like uh, pollution dust by nanotechnology even took the nanotechnology is have positive impact more than the negative impact. I think it's also be the important things to solve. Yeah, this is a question for Miss Tufsin Jarga. Pardon? Maybe you can see in a in room chat or Miss Tusin Jaka. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, my, I, I don't know uh, nanotechnology. Uh, my major is uh, engineering mechanics. Okay, I can read it here. Yeah, it's okay. Mm. Yeah, maybe, maybe I can, uh, can, continue, can I continue the session for proceed because we don't have, we don't have no more questions. Yeah, it's okay. Now, finally, we come to the end of webinar. So sadly, and we will like to say thanks again for our speaker for their information. Will be beneficial audience, and I hope we can meet again at other event. Yeah, thank you for our audience to join with us until at the last session. Yeah, maybe for Dr. Safira Sultana and Dr. Tufsin Jarga and. Dr. Marastika, we can take a picture together. Just a moment, please. I will click back. Yeah, thank you for joining. Thank you for Dr. Duf Sinjargal and Dr. Safira and Mr. Marastika. Yeah, thank you for joining thank with you. us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Goodbye to you. Um, okay, I'm going to a screenshot for the participant that uh, I hope you, you can open the camera. Okay. okay, one, two, three. Okay, the next page. One, two, and three. Okay, thank you. Thank you.